Have you ever wondered what it would be like to cruise down the Nile River, just like the ancient Greeks did, with Herodotus's writings as your guide? Begin your journey in the ancient city of Alexandria, a gem founded by none other than Alexander the Great himself. This city isn't just a name on the map. It's a living, breathing testament to the grandeur of Greek literature and history. Herodotus, the father of history, painted vivid pictures of this city in his writings. Imagine walking through the grand halls of the Library of Alexandria, where the world's knowledge was once stored, or gazing upon the Pharaoh's lighthouse, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. These landmarks, though lost to time, still echo in the city's vibrant pulse, a reminder of Alexandria's illustrious past. Steeped in history, Alexandria is just the beginning of our Nile adventure. What if we could journey back in time to witness the construction of the Great Pyramids? Just imagine bustling activity as thousands of laborers move massive limestone blocks, the air filled with the hum of chatter and the clink of tools. A sense of awe would be inescapable as we stood in the presence of such monumental human achievement. Our journey takes us to Memphis, once the ancient capital of Egypt. A city that thrived over 4,000 years ago, it was a hub of culture, trade and power. Its strategic location near the mouth of the Nile Delta made it a vital link between Upper and Lower Egypt. Just a stone's throw away from Memphis, we find the Giza Plateau, home to the Great Pyramids. The Great Pyramids, these colossal structures, have stood as silent witnesses to the passage of time. The grandest of them all, the Pyramid of Khufu, or Cheops as the Greeks called him, is the only surviving wonder of the ancient world. The historian Herodotus tells us that it took 20 years and a workforce of 100,000 men to construct this behemoth. Each block, weighing an average of two and a half tons, was painstakingly placed to form a structure that has withstood the test of time. But how did the ancient Egyptians achieve such a remarkable feat without the aid of modern machinery? Theories abound, from elaborate systems of ramps and levers to the more fantastical claims involving alien assistance. What do you think? How were these masterpieces of ancient engineering constructed? The Great Pyramids, a testament to human ingenuity and the enduring legacy of a civilization that flourished on the banks of the Nile. Their grandeur, mystery and sheer scale continue to captivate us, drawing us into the enigmatic world of the pharaohs. As we leave the shadows of the pyramids behind, the Nile carries us deeper into the past. Can you imagine the awe the ancient Greeks felt when they first discovered the Valley of the Kings? The Valley of the Kings, resting in the heart of ancient Thebes, was the final resting place for Egypt's pharaohs and nobility. It's a site steeped in grandeur and mystery, where the stories of ancient Egypt are etched into the walls of every tomb. Thebes itself was a city of immense importance in ancient Egypt, serving as its capital during the Middle and New Kingdom periods. The city was home to the god Amun, and the pharaohs built magnificent temples in his honour, which added to the city's grandeur. But it is the Valley of the Kings that truly captures the imagination. In this sprawling necropolis, the pharaohs etched their stories into the walls of their tombs, leaving behind a legacy that resonates through the ages. The tales of their lives, their battles, their achievements and their beliefs are all there to be discovered, like a storybook written in stone. This site holds a special place in Greek literature as well. Heliodorus of Emesa, in his novel Ethiopica, paints a vivid picture of the Valley of the Kings. Through his words, we are transported back in time to an era of romance and adventure. We can almost hear the whispers of the ancient pharaohs as they share their tales of valour and intrigue. The Valley of the Kings is not just a place of eternal rest for the pharaohs, it is also a testament to their power and their faith. Each tomb, each hieroglyph, each artefact found within these sacred walls is a piece of a puzzle that helps us understand the complex tapestry of ancient Egyptian civilization. This site exudes a sense of mystery and awe that captivates everyone who visits. It's a place where the past comes alive, and the stories of the pharaohs echo through the corridors of time. Leaving the tombs of the ancient pharaohs, our journey continues southward.
Have you ever contemplated the sheer determination and devotion it took to carve temples out of a mountainside? Imagine journeying to the city of Aswan, where the glistening waters of the Nile River meet the imposing sandstone cliffs. Nestled within these cliffs, you'd find the majestic Abu Simbel temples, a testament to ancient Egyptian engineering and religious conviction. These temples are not just grand structures of stone and sand, they are in essence love letters etched in rock, dedicated to the gods of the sun. The ancient historian Herodotus of Halicarnassus paints a vivid picture of these temples in his writings. He speaks of the vast, intricately carved facades and the statues of gods and pharaohs that tower over the landscape. Each detail, each carving, each hieroglyph, a testament to the unwavering devotion of the ancient Egyptians to their deities. Aswan and its nearby Abu Simbel temples were hubs of religious significance. They were the stage where the ancient Egyptians expressed their reverence for the gods of the sun, Ra and Amun. The temples were designed to align with the sun twice a year, illuminating the inner sanctum in a spectacle of light and shadow. This celestial event was seen as a divine occurrence, a moment where the gods of the sun extended their blessings to the pharaohs and their subjects. Imagine the dedication it required to construct these temples, to carve them out of the mountainside with nothing but primitive tools and sheer will. Picture the countless hours, the tireless effort, the unwavering faith it took to create such monumental tributes. The sun temples of Aswan and Abu Simbel are not just architectural marvels. They are a testament to the indomitable spirit of humanity and its quest to reach for the divine. As we bid farewell to the Sun Temples, the Nile takes us to its final destination. As we continue our journey along the river, we carry with us the awe-inspiring tales of the ancient Egyptians, their gods, and the temples they built in their honor. <sighs> Did you know that the ancient Greeks were fascinated by the distant kingdom of Kush and its mysterious pyramids? Let's cast our imaginations to Meroe, the capital of this ancient kingdom. Meroe was a hub of culture and power, its skyline pierced by the distinctive silhouettes of dozens of pyramids. Unlike their Egyptian counterparts, Kushite pyramids are smaller, with steep slopes, each one a testament to a departed noble or king. These structures, though less known, are no less impressive or significant. The Greeks' admiration for the kingdom of Kush wasn't merely architectural. Ancient historians, like the well-travelled Herodotus, wrote of the Kushites with fascination. He spoke of their wealth, their military prowess, and their unique customs, painting a picture of a vibrant, powerful civilization. In the Greek novel Ethiopica, Heliodorus of Emesa takes his readers on a thrilling journey to this far-off land. His tale of an Ethiopian princess and her Greek lover weaves together romance, adventure, and cultural exchange. The novel is a testament to the influence of Kushite culture on Greek literature and perhaps a reflection of the Greeks' curiosity about the wider world. It's worth pondering how much these African cultures shaped the Greek worldview. The Greeks, known as the cradle of Western civilization, were not isolated. They were part of a vast network of cultures and ideas that stretched across continents and centuries. The Kingdom of Kush was a key piece of that puzzle, contributing its own vibrant threads to the tapestry of human history. The Nile River, the lifeblood of these ancient civilizations, bore witness to these interactions. Its waters carried stories, goods and people from one kingdom to another, from one era to the next. The tales of the Nile are not just about pharaohs and pyramids, but also about the enduring connections between diverse cultures and the continuous flow of human curiosity and knowledge. As our journey ends, we are left with a deeper understanding of the intertwined histories of the Nile, the Greeks, and the timeless allure of ancient civilizations.